for you guys, some of you guys have only been here a camp or two, so we always start the two-day camps with Joshua no Jitsu, which is climbing skills. But I want to give you guys a little bit more deeper um, explanation as to why, other than just, you know, ninjas training climbing skills, right? I think that's the, that's the easy answer to okay, go train, right? Climbing skills is very difficult, and a lot of times people just can't do them. It is hard. It's hard dragging your own ass up and down brick walls and trees and all that kind of stuff. It's difficult. Part of ninjutsu and the kanji for nin is to endure, persevere, and overcome. So we start the camp with something that's very difficult that you have to endure, you have to persevere, and you have to overcome. It's very symbolic in the way of what ninjutsu is all about. You have an obstacle in front of you, you have to persevere, you have to get over it, you have to do the drills. And every single year, you guys get an opportunity to test yourself against these skill sets. And every year, we want to get better. The, the goal is to get better. The goal isn't just kind of stay the same and, you know, some can do it, some can't, and, you know, whatever, whatever. The goal is to always test your skill set and become better, right? And the, I think that it's a very important aspect of ninjutsu because climbing into things is what spies do. That's what ninja did, right? So. What we're going to be doing today is you guys are going to be leaving and you're going to go on your first little mission you're going to do your climbing skills. When you guys go, the skill sets that I want you guys to be working on is Shoten no Jitsu, which is ascending to heaven or climbing up vertical surfaces. Yokoroki, which is going to be the sideways walking across. Yokoroki can be out in the open, but it also can be climbing sideways across vertical surfaces as well. So you'll do Yokoroki. We also will be doing um, Kanpako no Jitsu and Kuma no Jitsu. So the spider method and the ghost method, right? Uh, shuko jutsu, so climbing the tree with the shuko is also an important aspect. You have all the, a lot of times you have these schools that they talk about, oh, we're going to climb with a shuko, or we're going to, you know, we're going to do this, and they talk about it like they're climbing up a castle wall with a shuko or something, um, or they give some folk tale about ninja, and then. I can't tell you how many times we've had other ninjutsu schools from other, you know, ninpo organizations come into the stealth camp and they can't, these are quote, said to be masters, right? And they can't even climb up a tree with a shuko. They've never done it. So it's like, you know, I think it's one of those things where it's also important that we do these skills because most ninjutsu schools talk about the skills and they never do them. We hang our hat is that we do do the skills. Now, I don't think that we need to be climbing trees with Shuko every single day you come into the damn dojo. Like, I'll be real with it too. But the skill set, the needed skill set, has to be there because that is what it is. And for us, or at least for me, and I can't speak for all the other organizations and everybody that does ninjutsu, but for me, I think preserving the essence and the integrity of what these arts were is the most important part. And these three camps give us the opportunity to do that, whether it's the Tomori camp, Daikomi Asai, or Stealth camp. It gives us the opportunity to preserve some of these old skills, these old techniques that not a damn, none of us is going to do in, in normal day. I mean, you're never going to climb a tree with a shuko. You know what I mean? I, at least not unless... <laughs> <laughs> fill in the blank. Not unless, you know, that's just not going to be the normal. You catch what I mean? But we have these three camps. We have these three taikai every year to preserve a skill set that these guys trained in these techniques, and women, to be able to infiltrate, exfiltrate, evade, steal, arson, uh, you know, take out enemy territory, take out enemy groups and armies, and, you know, protect themselves. Ultimately, ninjutsu is a method of protection. You're, you gotta protect what you love. And to do that, you have to fight or kind of combat in a way that's not conventional. So you have conventional warfare, unconventional warfare. So people died for these skills. Like all the things you guys are going to be doing, they were literally trained in these skill sets and then they died for whatever cause it was that they were doing. Right? And I think it's important that we are the ones, or at least we, kind of keep that true. And I know that most schools don't. They, you know, you see most Nimpo organizations and they just teach Taijutsu and they call it Ninjutsu every now and again. They'll play with some sticks, they'll do a little Kobajutsu, but they, they don't do Ninjutsu. They don't do stealth walking or infiltration or any of that kind of stuff. And I think it's sad. The reason I don't think, and I, and I will say this, the reason I don't think they teach it is because they never learned it to begin with. 
I know they claim that they learned it, but they probably did a day or two at some little seminar somewhere, and they did a little mokutan no jitsu, jumping out in the weeds, or maybe they swam a little bit with a snorkel or something, and then all the way and they got a picture with, quote unquote, a grandmaster or a master somewhere else, and now they can pass those few little pictures that they have off as, oh, I trained in it, but ninjutsu, this is what they say, ninjutsu shouldn't be taught in the modern day because there's no relevance for it. It does, it's not needed in the modern day. And I call absolute bullshit on that. Ninjutsu is needed in the modern day. We need these skills. You need to have these skills because not all, um, we're going to use the word enemy or opponent or attackers or things that you have to combat in your life is something that's going to give you a right grab. Sometimes outthinking your opponent, using strategy, using the elements to your advantage, things that ninjutsu teaches is going to be needed. And when you have these people who teach taijutsu, call it ninjutsu, or teach stick weapons or whatever, they're throwing shuriken and say, oh, this is ninjutsu here, and they're doing stick fighting. It's not ninjutsu, it's, that's kobajutsu, and that's taijutsu. Ninjutsu, taijutsu is not ninjutsu, and I've said it a million times. Anyone who claims taijutsu is ninjutsu, they're selling you something, all right? But, for me, I did train in these skills, and I think they're absolutely needed in the modern day. And I have my vision as to why, and my understanding as to why, and it's, as the instructor, it's my responsibility to pass that on to you guys, and to make sure that you guys have the skills to be able to do that, right? And when you climb something, now let's talk about climbing. When you, when you climb something, whether it's a wall, a tree, or whatever it is, right? The only opponent that's in front of you is you. you. You either do it or you don't do it. You either do it or you quit. And it's one of those things where it's like, and sometimes you just can't do it for a variety of reasons, but you learn, you learn your limitations with something that has to push you to a limitation. It has to push you through that. And I think understanding, like, I've got to move my body over an obstacle that I'm not supposed to get over. A barrier was there to keep people out, right? So for what we do, we need to make sure that we can go over all barriers. Not just in fighting, but in life as well. We need to extend outside those barriers. So starting all of our camps with Josho no Jitsu is kind of, to me, a very symbolic way of saying, I'm gonna overcome something that I'm not supposed to do, and I'm gonna get over something that I'm not supposed to get over. And it just sets the tone for the whole camp going forward.